Hey, in today's lesson, I'm going to teach you real life English. That's right. We're going to check out a situation and I'm going to teach you the words that native English speakers would use in real life to describe the situation. This lesson will help you sound more natural and speak English more fluently. Are you ready? Well then I'm teacher Tiffany. Let's jump right in. Now, the very first thing we have to do is check out the exact situation. So here's the situation. We see four individuals. It looks like they're hiking. We see lots of mountains behind them, but the very first word that pops into my mind is lofty, lofty. Now I want you to repeat after me lofty. Ooh, good job again. Lofty. Excellent. Last time lofty. Woo. Great job. Now this word lofty, it literally just means rising to a great height or impressively high. For example, when I lived in South Korea, I loved going hiking on the weekends. I truly enjoy nature and my time in Korea was filled with hiking with friends and students. Why? Because Korea has so many lofty mountains, very high. You caught it, right? So again, as we see in the image, as we see that there are these lofty, extremely high mountains, we have a better understanding of the word. Now check out this example sentence. All the tourists were looking at the lofty mountains in front of them. Again, very tall impressively high. Once again, all the tourists were looking at the lofty mountains in front of them. Makes sense, right? So again, number one is lofty. Now real quick, before we go to number two, remember I'm trying to help you speak English fluently, but I know you probably need more help. So I want you to join my free English newsletter. That's right. Totally free three times a week. That's right. One, two, three. I will send you an email with English tips and resources to help you improve your English. All you have to do is go to speak English with Tiffany.com forward slash newsletter. I am happy to help you achieve your goals. So join the newsletter. Thousands upon thousands of students around the world are already getting this email three times a week. So join the newsletter by going to speak English with Tiffany.com forward slash newsletter. I know you'll enjoy it. All right. So let's go back now and look at the second word. So if we scroll down the picture and see this young man with his face kind of scrunched up, the first word that pops in my head is excruciating, excruciating. I want you to repeat after me, excruciating. Excellent. Again, excruciating. Very good. Last time after me, excruciating. Nice. Now this word excruciating, it just means causing great pain or anguish, agonizing, causing great pain or anguish. I want you to think about a woman when a woman gives birth, brings a child into this world. She has to go through excruciating pain. You can tell by the look on a woman's face when she's delivering a baby, she has to push the baby out and it is extremely painful. So when we look at this image, looking at his face, we can tell he's in excruciating pain. You caught it, right? Now let's check out the example sentence. Here we go. My mom said that she had an excruciating headache after the accident, very painful, agonizing. Again, my mom said that she had an excruciating headache after the accident. Makes sense, right? Okay. So we have excruciating. Now I want us to look at a different part of this image. If we go to the right, we see this other young lady. And the first word that pops into my head is hysterical hysterical. We see her glasses almost falling out. So off. So I want you to repeat after me hysterical. Excellent. Again, hysterical. 
Great job. Last time after me. Hysterical. Excellent. Now this just means extremely funny, extremely funny. That joke was hysterical. So if we go back and we take a look at this image, it looks like something hysterical has happened, right? It looks like she's laughing hard. Her glasses are almost about to fall off of her face. So we understand this word hysterical means extremely funny. Here's an example sentence. Everyone said that his last movie, <laughs> his last movie was hysterical. You like my acting skills <laughs> again, hysterical just means extremely funny. So last time everyone said that his last movie was hysterical. Makes sense. Okay. So we have hysterical. Now, if we move along this image again, the next word that pops into my mind is supportive. Look at this young man. He seems to be holding up the other one. And the word that pops in my mind is supportive. I want you to repeat after me. Supportive. Excellent. Again, supportive. Great job. Last time after me, supportive. Excellent. Now this word supportive, it literally just means giving help and encouragement again, giving help and encouragement. Take a look at the image. One more time. We can see that he is helping the other guy. He's supporting him. He's holding him up. So once again, this word supportive means giving help and encouragement makes sense, right? So here's the example sentence. Studies have shown that children with supportive parents often do well at school. Parents that help their children and encourage them. They are supportive. One more time. Studies have shown that children with supportive parents often do well at school. Make sense. All right. Excellent. So you see now again, as a native English speaker, I'm looking at this image and words are coming up. Now the next word that comes up as I pan to the left is shocked. Look at this young lady's face. She's standing right next to the man that we said was supportive. The word that comes to my mind is shocked. So after me shocked, good job again, shocked, great job. Last time after me shocked. Excellent. Now this word shocked just means feeling very upset or surprised, upset or surprised. Now, once again, check out her face. She looks surprised. Her eyebrows are raised. Her mouth is open. She's wondering oh, what happened. So again, oh, shocked. She's very surprised. Make sense. All right. Now here's the example sentence. Michael was shocked to discover that he had no money left in his account. <gasps> I don't have any money left. Very surprised. Once again, Michael was shocked to discover that he had no money left in his account. In English, we say shocked makes sense, right? So again, today I gave you real life English words that I would use to describe a situation. And now you know them too. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and I'll talk to you in the next one. You still there? <laughs> you know what time it is. It's story time. Hey, I said it's story time. <laughs> now today's story is something that happened recently and it's a story slash motivational situation. I'll explain a few weeks ago. I had a conversation with an individual. I won't say the person's name, but this individual let me know that sometimes English learners, when they're learning English and studying English, they get a little bit discouraged when someone says, speak English like a native. 
And as I listened to her tell me about her friends and her coworkers and her associate situations, I really thought deeply about what she was saying. I heard that they were discouraged because they felt like they would never achieve that goal. They felt like they would never be able to sound like a native English speaker. Now, why am I telling you about this? Because I want to encourage you. You might have had that thought before, and you might have it right now. You might have an accent, and in your opinion, your accent is too strong. You might live in a country where no native English speakers actually live. There might be many other factors that are causing you to feel like it's impossible for you to speak English like a native English speaker. Let me tell you this, it's not impossible. You see, when I say speak English like a native English speaker, I'm saying that I want you to learn how to organize your thoughts like a native English speaker. I want you to speak English with confidence. I don't want you to be nervous. I want you to be able to express every thought, every idea, every opinion that you have. When you're able to do these things, you will speak English like a native English speaker. So today, as your English teacher, I want you to listen very closely. I want you to stop worrying about other people. I want you to stop comparing yourself to other people. And I want you to realize that nothing is impossible. You will be able to speak English like a native English speaker, which means you'll be able to express your thoughts. You'll be able to express your ideas. You'll be able to speak English with confidence. All you have to do is trust me. I'll get you to your goal. I'll help you get there. I believe in you, and it's time for you to believe in yourself. I'll talk to you in the next lesson.